so uh, welcome to everybody. Thank you, Indus. Uh, it's a great pleasure to have here uh, uh, Professor Jacob Palis from the Institute of Mathematica Pura and Picada in Rio de Janeiro uh, to give the, the field of this lecture. So, uh, on behalf of the Centro Internacional de Mathematica, um, the Sociedade Portuguesa de Mathematica, and the Centro de Mathematica de Porto, um, I'd like to welcome you here. Thank you for being willing to come to give this lecture. Uh, so, of course, I guess everybody here knows very well Professor Jacob Pauli. I don't need to tell you very much about him, but certainly it's, it's a pleasure to have here this great mathematician to, uh, to talk to us. Well, thank you. Thank you. But uh, I don't say it's funny in Portuguese or English. Uh, first of all, uh, it's a great uh, pleasure for me to be here. I have been coming to Portugal since uh, 82. And uh, mm -hmm. so I'm very attracted uh, to the mathematical community of Portugal. Uh, I have several students or students or former students and uh, and so on. At least one more generation. I don't know how many. Two or three, maybe. Uh, so uh, uh, I am here with uh, uh, great uh, happiness and uh, always uh, very supportive of the development of mathematics and science in them in Portugal. And uh, so please uh, consider me as uh, one of you. Uh, so, uh, well, my work in uh, dynamical systems uh, goes uh, way back to the middle of scientists. Uh, where when uh, I was uh, in Berkeley, in California, and uh, so uh, uh, I decided to look in the question of uh, uh, stability of uh, dynamical systems, uh, especially uh, 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 orbit stability. And uh, uh, I was uh, very lucky to find uh, uh, a way to to consider this this problem in a uh, uh, situation where uh, uh, it was not uh, uh, very homogeneous, and so it went uh, uh, a long way. Uh, after that, and um, so uh, at that point, uh, my advisor, uh, Steve Smale, a very well-known uh, mathematician, uh, had the idea that uh, began actually with uh, Poincaré of trying to uh, define what would be a typical uh, uh, behavior for dynamical systems. The first to point out, not in a clear, very uh, uh, well-formulated way, but certainly a definite way, was, uh, as I said, uh, Poincaré. After that, there were uh, other tries, and uh, finally we had uh, uh, Smale, uh, suggesting that uh, what we call hyperbolic systems, which uh, will appear in a moment, would be typical. Well, uh, uh, that conjecture did not last much time. Two or three years later, he himself and others uh, were proving that uh, there were uh, systems that are not hyperbolic, and you could not 
approximated by uh, a hyperbolic one. So uh, I'm mentioning a topology in the space of dynamics. That's not very complicated. What we do is uh, we assume uh, uh, the dynamics to be uh, uh, differentiable up to a certain order. And then uh, uh, the metric there would have to do with uh, 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 how, how near are the dynamics point-wise and their derivatives up to that order. It's a very uh, simple, very efficient uh, definition. So there were, in other words, there are open sets of dynamics uh, such that no dynamics in there is hyperbolic. Now, uh, all these terms will be more precisely defined in a moment, but I want to throw right away uh, the perspective on uh, the globality of dynamics. So first of all, uh, uh, for me, dynamics will be uh, uh, transformations of uh, differentiable uh, manifold. So it's a nice piece of uh, Euclidean space, if you wish. It will be a finite dimension. Except when I say to the contrary later on. And uh, so uh, I'll consider uh, maps that have the inverse the homeomorphism and they'll be differentiable. So we call them diffeomorphic. Or else, just differential equations, uh, simple ones, uh, uh, generating flows. And so we have either diffeomorphism or flows. Now, uh, I'll assume, as I said, that they are differentiable, at least one differentiable. Uh, and then I'll look into the space of dynamics. That means uh, I define uh, in the set of all dynamics uh, when two of them are closed, are closed pointwise, and the derivatives are closed up to the order of differentiability. Then back to uh, uh, the dream of Smeil that was really a dream of, uh, of Poincaré, was to say uh, uh, not the behavior of all dynamics, but the typical ones. So we have to define what I mean by typical and uh, try to look into that. It would be, uh, it's not reasonable to try to understand all dynamics. So, from that point on, there were a lot of developments in dynamics in the 60s concerned with, as I said, the stability questions and uh, 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 concepts derived from that, like hyperbolicity and so on. Now, uh, by the end of the 60s, uh, I uh, uh, start reading a lot of uh, the work of Poincaré, and uh, at one point uh, he refers uh, uh, dramatically to what we call uh, bifurcation of uh, uh, what we call uh, homoclinic trajectories. He was looking to, of course, uh, uh, celestial mechanics, in mechanics, and uh, uh, he had to face uh, uh, this kind of questions, uh, uh, and uh, to him was uh, something very dramatic because he missed the point at one uh, at one paper through which he uh, won uh, uh, a special prize. <coughs> And uh, he had to go, to go back because someone pointed to him, uh, I don't understand uh, your reasoning, and he was wrong. And so this, uh, uh, I kept that in my mind for, 
quite a while and I decided together with a few other colleagues to pursue a different line in dynamics. Uh, so it was like uh, having two lives. And the second one really took me to, uh, uh, to uh, look into change in dynamics. Now, like you say, evolution, Darwin's evolution, and, or, or, or the theory of uh, Marx, you, you see evolution and bifurcations. Well, that's what we deal with, not in political terms. At least I didn't apply to <laughs> political situations. But uh, to me, all these three uh, ways of thinking are uh, uh, similar. I don't say equal, so I may, I may offend the social scientists, but uh, <clears throat> uh, I didn't get good answers from a number of them when I said that there is a parallel <coughs> between uh, these three ways of thinking. Anyhow, uh, to go that way, uh, we had uh, really uh, to go into uh, fractal dimensions. Uh, you're going to see uh, Hausdorff dimension here, especially. And uh, we had to adopt, uh, which was already uh, uh, quite developed by the Russian school, which was uh, the theory of probability. And so this uh, 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 putting all this together, it took uh, uh, something like 20 years of uh, uh, very nice uh, examples and, uh, and results. And so finally, in 1995, uh, I was, as always, uh, uh, very audacious, not knowing exactly what I'm talking about, but. Uh, knowing the direction, I put the question of uh, uh, what would be typical in dynamics. And uh, behind uh, the proposal is the idea that uh, in many, many cases that's not uh, really new, we have uncertainty in the models of uh, natural phenomena and others. The idea behind it is that uh, if my proposal is correct and is being proven to be so in uh, a number of situations, not yet uh, the whole thing, uh, we would be able to estimate uncertainty in these models. So the potential for applications is certainly not small to talk like the British, double negative. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to present to you now. Well, how do I start? I, I prefer here. As you can see, I am a dinosaur. <laughs> This one fell asleep. <laughs> I hope it comes. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much. Yeah, so uh, uh, all these I have mentioned before, uh, except that. Uh, uh, we shall consider uh, what I said in uh, parametrized term, which is uh, a good way of looking at uh, this question of uh, uh, what is typical. And so uh, I'll move on. Okay, then I, I call the attention of uh, the big probability playing a role all the time there. Yeah, so again, uh, 
Uh, uh, I would uh, look for the typical dynamics in the sense of, uh, that, as I said, the phase space is uh, compact, uh, no boundary. This can be extended to uh, the non-compact case, but let's focus the compact case, no boundary. And uh, I went to look at uh, attractors. There where uh, I'll talk about uh, uncertainty and uh, uh, how uh, uh, the trajectory. So I start in a certain point. I apply the dynamics many times. I want to know where it goes in the future. So it's really a question of uh, 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 trying to predict the future. That's why the interest of that, certainly. <coughs> I'll keep uh, making mistakes all the time. Mm -hmm. So, uh, forget about the technical expression of that. What is important is uh, uh, in the space of dynamics, I say that there is a dense set with uh, only finitely uh, many attractors. I'll define attractors in a moment. But that, that means, as, well, I can advance the explanation. It's just uh, 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 a set which is invariant by trajectories of this dynamics that attracts all uh, nearby trajectories starting near it, all nearby trajectories go to this set. This, then we call this set uh, an attractor. Well, of course, I want uh, uh, a dense orbit in the set so to avoid that it can be split in several attractors. Well, the second term is, uh, uh, is quite uh, uh, sophisticated, but uh, important, but I want go into that. We have some specialists in the house about uh, uh, what is called uh, a special uh, invariant measure uh, named after Simon Red Bowen. Uh, the stochastic stability is a classical uh, also concept. But it's not, it's not very important. It's not the main point in this lecture. So I'll jump it. Uh, to avoid uh, technicalities. This is, uh, this is important, the, the last one uh, point here, uh, that uh, typically we are going to see attractors with nice properties. Okay, I, I like this uh, uh, little figure very much. Uh, so I'm talking about uh, uh, parameter space, finite dimension, cross the phase space where I'll look into the set of uh, uh, transformations of this space, which will be uh, a differentiable manifold. I'll assume the transformations to be differentiable and often with a differentiable inverse, the case of diffeomorphism. But in the case of the interval, I'll allow uh, transformations also without uh, inverse, so otherwise uh, it would be well, much simpler. Now, uh, if you consider a parametrized family of, uh, say, diffeomorphism or flows, then what I'm saying is uh, typically in the parameter space, that means with total probability, and that means the big probability, one, I'll have uh, the corresponding dynamics in the phase space to have only finitely many attractors. This is an attractor, so just a point attracting all orbits nearby. 
of this decade of flows, so uh, the periodic orbit may be attracting. And uh, this is the novelty, uh, what is called the uh, Lorentz attractor. I'll talk about it more specifically later. You see, uh, uh, from uh, the important idea of uh, uh, being uh, hyperbolic, as proposed by uh, Smale, we went far, quite far from it with the number of examples. And one was Lorenz, that you probably heard about, uh, Butterfly. Uh, Lorenz Butterfly was uh, fundamental. And there is another one uh, named after an astronomer uh, called Denon. Anyhow, we have a finite number of attractors. This is compact. And moreover, I'll say that with total probability, the trajectories in the phase space will go to one of these attractors. Not only one, will go to the attractors. I may have some divisors, but uh, uh, that I don't know where the orbit goes. I won't say on where it goes, but it doesn't matter. That will have zero Lebesgue measure. So I don't care about that. So the idea is to uh, say uh, a fundamental quality of the typical dynamics in the sense of having only finitely many attractors and also module zero, volume zero, all the trajectories will go to these attractors in the future. And there, each attractor will have a certain uncertainty. That's simply the diameter of the attractor. So if, you, if we know that this is true, what I'm saying is true, then of course people in applied mathematics or, or else, or, or some smart physicists will chase immediately where the attractors are and they will certainly be able to estimate the diameters, and that will mean an estimation of the uncertainty of the model. And that's really what I am interested in, in estimating uncertainty of future behavior in many of uh, 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 natural uh, problems. So, uh, it's quite ambitious, but why not? So when I put this uh, program, 95, of course I have chosen Paris to do so, and uh, an important meeting in dynamics in honor of uh, Adrien Duardy. And uh, as even before the lecture was uh, ended, as I expected, Many people in the audience tried to give counterexamples immediately. So I had stones and eggs. <laughs> I have been surviving very well for 15, 15 uh, 16 years. It's still not there, but it's coming. It's slowly, it's coming. So, in the case of one dimension, uh, uh, this is uh, <clears throat> completely solved. It's highly non-trivial. We had uh, many uh, uh, important uh, works, uh, mathematicians connected to that. And finally, the answer was uh, complete by Arne de Mello, Lubitsch, and Arne Morel. So this is a case of uh, uh, one dimension. Uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, now uh, instead of diffeomorphism, we consider just transformations, CK transformations, K at least two. However, there is a limitation which is uh, uh, only one critical point. Uh, 
So even in this case, uh, there is a, a, a quite a challenging question concerning uh, transformations of the interval with several bumps, with several critical points. I have been losing uh, bottles of champagne on that because I thought that would come uh, quickly after uh, the case of uh, one critical point. Uh, so I lost uh, two already. I bet another one that that will come. <laughs> well, I'm enthusiastic, but I have to tell the truth. Uh, it's not a simple uh, program. Now, quickly, uh, well, you see what attractors are. They attract uh, uh, all orbits uh, that start uh, nearby. Uh, it's a subset invariant by the dynamics and uh, uh, attracting all nearby uh, uh, orbits. Well, you know, you can say a uh, little sophistication, uh, attract the set of positive neighbors, always a big in the neighborhood. Okay. Now, this is uh, Lawrence, I'll mention quickly. Uh, this is uh, very famous. So Lawrence, that's an interesting story. Uh, 1963, uh, he was looking to uh, together with other people. One is never alone in this. Uh, and the prediction for the weather in the future uh, or the climate, which is a little uh, farther in the future. And uh, so he came to a uh, uh, set of equations uh, truncating from uh, an infinite dimension of system. And uh, he, he checked it with a simple machine that was available at that time, uh, not uh, really a computer, uh, two uh, very interesting properties. One was that, uh, so you can see that 0, 0, 0 is a fixed point. And uh, it's not linear, the system, but it's just quadratic. Yeah. And uh, one of the properties he notes is that uh, with total probability starting, he didn't use this word, but it's now the way we say it. I start with the nearby point of the figure that seemed to be uh, an attractor to him, and it was. Uh, uh, in the future, the orbits would uh, uh, split apart as much as the diameter of the butterfly. That was one thing. The second is that he uh, changed a bit these coefficients and seemed to get the same similar situation. Not same, but similar situation. An attractor with this property that we call chaoticity. With total probability uh, of points nearby, the future orbits will spread apart as much as the diameter. Well, this is already a counterexample uh, to uh, Ismail's uh, conjecture, but we didn't know. <laughs> it was like next door, but no communication. And so, uh, uh, so in 1963, uh, uh, it was already uh, proven that uh, this, the non-hyperbolic systems contain an open set. These are not hyperbolic, for sure. I'm not showing it, but it's, I'm saying it's not hyperbolic. No chance of being hyperbolic. Hyperbolic means, let me jump, uh, the much... Uh, uh, complete uh, simple situation. Okay, now uh, there is some. Uh, doesn't matter. Uh, hyperbolic means that uh, uh, <coughs> along trajectories uh, you have some contraction and some expansion 
in complementary dimensions. That's all. If this is systematic, then uh, you say the system is hyperbolic. In the case of flow, there is one more dimension, a long flow. Well, then uh, along the uh, direction of the flow, you don't say anything. It's like neutral. Then in the complementary to that, the complementary dimension, then it splits up into uh, 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 subspace uh, where you see contraction and another subspace complementary to that where you see expansion. So that's what is hyperbolic. So let's uh, go back there. So Lorentz is not hyperbolic and at the same time is uh, open. Sometimes we call it robust. So then the hyperbolic systems are not, are not dense, are not uh, typical. Then uh, uh, 1975 or so, uh, an astronomer uh, called Venom, he tried to uh, imitate uh, Lorentz, but now for deformations of the plane. So again, he considered uh, just uh, uh, contraction, you know, uh, degree two in the plane that would take uh, a disk of big uh, radios into itself. And so if you keep on, you get a tractor. Now, for certain values of uh, A and B here, again, experimentally, uh, he uh, uh, conjectured that uh, you have uh, an attractor which is not just a, a simple periodic orbit of large period. You see, you cannot just draw a picture and decide that. if uh, it's a line that uh, uh, expands and uh, folds. Or, or, or a point with a very large period that almost fills and uh, it may take you uh, to be wrong, uh, to have the wrong idea. So uh, uh, this was later proved to, to be true, that there is such a, such a tractors. You have uh, some fractal dimension transversally. And uh, this is not open. So uh, if I change uh, for a certain values of A B, and B, if I change a little bit, not necessarily I get uh, the same kind of attractor. I'll get a periodic one, very large period. But this probabilist probabilistic the persistence. So for some uh, uh, set, of positive measure in A and B, you do get uh, an attractor like that, which is not periodic. So again, it's not hyperbolic. That's not very hard to see. And so this is another important uh, example of non-hyperbolicity. Again, hyperbolicity means contraction and expansion all the time. You don't have it here. Now, uh, it's interesting to say that it took uh, uh, 10 years or so from the 75 to 85, 86, uh, to uh, prove that this, this was so. That this is really a concrete example, not just a proposal. And involved on that, there is Carlson, Benedict, to Sweden, but also Marcelo Viana played an important role in that. And, uh, and someone from Venezuela. <coughs> okay, so let's go on. Uh, now, uh, back to Poincaré. There is the idea of uh, cycles in dynamics. 
This line was not there. But this morning I went to uh, the museum here, and there was the, uh, an exhibition by an artist that separates the picture. <laughs> the separatist. So it seems that I was starting to do it, but I didn't do it. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, so you can imagine this uh, uh, to be uh, a diffeomorphism on the surface, depending on the parameter, and then uh, this uh, line, which is uh, made of points that in the future go away from the fixed point, start touching this line of points that in the future comes to here. So when they go away, we call them unstable. When they go in, we call it stable. So you see, uh, the way to, to do so is to have a tangents to begin with, and then to cross, like here. Now, this disappeared for some, uh, <laughs> some problem about uh, uh, the program used, but uh, Imagine that this uh, point is equal to that one. Or oh, maybe I have a data. Do you right here? Well, no, that is really against me. You see, in Brazil, it's very common to use Microsoft, and I see that the Europeans hate. Uh, <laughs> the old days, so uh, always some problems. Okay, no survive. So you imagine at least this figure is uh, imagine that S1 equals S2, then uh, we call this point homoclinic. That means this. So it's, here is like uh, if uh, S2 equals S3. So this line of points going away, so we have expansion here, uh, match the future, that's the line of points going in. If you consider the derivative of the map at this point, you're going to see an eigenvalue bigger than one and one smaller than one in norm. So, uh, uh, so it's very important in dynamics to consider cycles. Uh, the trouble with uh, Poincaré, I mean, of course, is uh, our greatest uh, predecessor, but he made a mistake uh, he, well, concerning uh, homoclinic <coughs> orbits. He took uh, uh, very few derivatives and concluded in some case that uh, the two lines would be equal, which is very rare, it's clearly very rare. And that was his mistake. So in the uh, uh, Nouvelle Méthode de la Mécanique Celeste, he, there is a one page that what caught my attention, a very dramatic page where he says, you know, the, uh, the hard part of dynamics is in this phenomenon. I never forgot that, that sentence. So I still uh, dream with it every, every evening. Because it's really uh, the key to dynamics is to understand this uh, process where you are uh, moving a parameter and then you go through a homoclinic tangent and then uh, you make it transversal, this line. When you do that, you see a, a dramatic change in dynamics. When I was playing a little bit uh, in a very loose way with Darwin and, and Marx, it's, uh, what I meant here is that the change in dynamics is very dramatic. And this is still a challenge for us to fully understand this. Uh, 
so that's uh, an, an important point here. Now, you can uh, think of this in uh, higher dimension. Uh, I don't know if you see clearly here, but uh, in this case, what I try to show here uh, is uh, one dimension of uh, points coming in and two dimensions going out. That way and that way, and vice versa here. And somehow I create a cycle where uh, here is the dual one, two dimensions coming, on only one dimension going out, and they cross. So it's really dual situations crossing here. Now I don't have to make tangents here. Since this is one dimension and this is one dimension, there is a missing dimension, but the total dimension is three, so we don't have transversality. Okay, so these are the two uh, crucial elements, no more than that, uh, to uh, set up uh, the program for dynamics. So, now, how, uh, how do you go about uh, proving what I suggested at the beginning? Would be uh, uh, not, uh, uh, well, to me, not very satisfactory. Just uh, set up a conjecture and not to give uh, other uh, parallel conjectures to indicate the way, the avenue to prove it. So this all came together. So the idea is that uh, <coughs> that uh, what we have to uh, is there something missing here? I hope not. Oh yeah, okay. Yes, we would uh, be able uh, to prove the conjecture that these finitely many attractors and uh, almost all orbits going to the attractors, if uh, uh, we uh, uh, do not see any homoclinic tangents or heteroclinic cycle. So I'm avoiding the existence of homoclinic tangents or heteroclinic cycles. Uh, I am saying, if I have uh, some spot in the set of dynamics where these two elements are absent, then I should be able to prove the conjecture. That's the way to prove the conjecture. And that is, uh, I would get from this absence of uh, homoclinic tangencies and uh, heteroclinic cycles, I would have some form of hyperbolicity. And that's in the case of hyperbolic systems. We know that uh, uh, what I said is correct, and that is not new. And then what I would have to uh, pursue the, the proof of the conjecture will be near the unfolding of this homoclinic tangents or heterodimensional cycles. That's exactly what I was pointing to. If I have some uh, hyperbolicity, strict hyperbolicity, I know everything. I know since the 60s. I don't have to prove anything. What I said is true, finitely many attractors, and most orbits going to that track. So, uh, I look at uh, what else do I have to explore? Well, I say if uh, I have, I see some uh, homoclinic tangents, then two things. Uh, if I unfold it, then I show that, so I make it transversal, I show that it's true in the, for many 
situations near this unfolding. Okay, or else I have an absence of this, and that is I have some kind of hyperbolicity. So it's one of the two. Or I, uh, I introduce also this uh, parallel dimension of cycles. So in other words, uh, the conjecture uh, leading to this uh, way to solve the, the problem is that uh, uh, any dynamical systems can be approximated by a hyperbolic one, then I know that's true, the conjecture, the program, or one with homophilic tangents or a parallel dimension of cycle. Now, if I get the second part, then that's what uh, uh, I'm telling you. If I uh, unfold it, I destroy it a little bit, then I, I'll show that in the neighborhood of it, this is true. Then I'll be complete. Now, conjecture one, at least for R equal one, has been proven very recently. Uh, by uh, um, Pujals and Provisier, the two names that are here. The second conjecture is not, uh, I won't talk about it, it's an interesting one, uh, but uh, it's not relevant uh, to, to the proof of the main uh, conjecture. But the conjecture one, yes. The second uh, uh, very uh, important and beautiful result is that uh, also uh, very recent, it's not published yet, and it's due to the same uh, people, for this year, Pujals, says that any diffeomorphism can be approximated but by one that is essentially hyperbolic. It's not very important for you to know what is essentially hyperbolic. What, what is important here is the word hyperbolic, some form of hyperbolicity. Okay? Now, uh, this is true. Uh, the limitation here is uh, in the C1 topologies, but that has to be improved. But once you have that, then look at this. You have a finite number of attractors, and the union of the basins of attraction, it's open and dense. I, I didn't say open and dense, I said total measure. They already know how to prove total measure uh, up to dimension and including three. So that's, uh, that would be it. A little more effort here. Another bottle of champagne <laughs> will have uh, the complete program, at least in the C1 topology. Now, for uh, R bigger than one, there are efforts uh, coming from uh, dimension one, the case of one, uh, one bump, one critical point, as I mentioned to you, and going to dimension two, and that is uh, 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 it's a long-range uh, program, but it's uh, successful. And that a number of people are involved. So there are two fronts. In the case of uh, the C1 topology, we are almost there due to these results. Uh, uh, and uh, in dimension two, uh, uh, the progress is, uh, is very good, but is step by step. Uh, going to dimension two, uh, to, to then to go up into higher dimension. It will take uh, quite a while. According to Lubitsch, uh, uh, six months ago, a little more, 10 months ago, uh, uh, they organized a meeting uh, in connection with my birthday, and uh, he said, when uh, I was 70, he said, when you are 80, we are, will be half the way, and then 90 will, uh, 
four fifths and then a hundred of everything. Thank you very much. Uh, I guess I should uh, give you some uh, uh, some uh, reference. Oops. Oh, back to zero. Wow. And now what? <laughs> well, I'll leave this here, yeah. also in written form yeah. and the uh, reference on that. So maybe it can be. I think I did it too quickly. Yes, please. Oh, it was incomplete. Yeah. That, uh, eight, a, pie, a page or two. I have one question. Please. I do not know nothing about the one-dimensional case uh, about Ruby, but there is a way of bypass the, the pure closing lemma or Ayashi closing lemma to, to get the, the C2 or this Yes. C2. Well, uh, <coughs> The closing lemma, well, there is something in dynamic which we call closing lemma. That is, uh, when you have an orbit that goes uh, in the future, very near the initial point, uh, the question is, uh, can uh, you perturb your system in CR way for any R, say C2 close, C3, C4, etc., to uh, make it uh, periodic, so to close it. That's why the name closed. Yes, this is the main obstacle. Uh, we, we know uh, this in general only in the C1 topology when uh, we try to control uh, C2, uh, uh, second and third and so on derivative. The situation uh, is unclear. Uh, however, uh, uh, certainly, uh, they went around very well in the one-dimensional case. Uh, that's for sure. That, so the question is not that in one dimension, including for many bumps, uh, you have the density of the hyperbolic ones. That's why uh, in the CR topology, anyhow. That's why I, ke I keep losing bottles of champagne because to me uh, it should, uh, should be there, the, the final proof, but some, there is still some obstacle. Now in high dimension, I, uh, for a long time, I defend the thesis that we don't have to prove this result in general, but to focus in the questions we have you see, to deal with this kind of question, uh, uh, making an almost a periodic orbit to be uh, periodic by moving a bit the system. Uh, on top of, uh, you see, there is a lot of structure here. So my point is to defend this. Uh, uh, it will be harder, but uh, you should not try. It, it doesn't depend on the abstract, the proof of, of the closed lemma uh, in abstract, just by saying, um, in any case, if the orbit goes, uh, uh, goes back uh, near the initial point, then you can make it periodic. We have much more structure here. So it would be nice to have the closed lemma, but I don't think uh, I share with Lubitsch or Lubitsch share with me. <laughs> I was older to say these things. But anyhow, we shared the idea that uh, uh, you have to work uh, with the structure you are setting and directly. That's what uh, him and 
others, Martins, and so on and so forth, are trying to do. that you are a physicist, I sort of knew you were going to that. I, I don't know, but certainly we should be able to match these uh, two things. It's, uh, since the physicists are very smart. Whoa. No, I no, believe no, it. No, 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 I'm serious. Not my case. <laughs> yeah, no, no, They're usually uh, very smart. No, I think we should bring, uh, uh, well, you know, uh, of course, there should be a connection there. I, I didn't think about it, but we should talk more. <laughs> Certainly, uh, the, the basic idea should be the same. But I forgot, since you motivated me to uh, go into uh, a point which I promised and I didn't uh, say anything about it. One case that uh, I really am passionate for is the turbulence. If I'm saying, wow, well, uncertainty, so one of, uh, one of the uh, certainly uh, wonderful example is turbulence, besides, of course, the climate and the weather prediction. On turbulence, I have been asking uh, people, uh, actually I attended a few uh, a nice uh, 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 workshops on turbulence. And uh, the, the main people around, at least the ones I met, uh, say that uh, uh, my ideas seem to be to fit the experiment, so this is very encouraging. From the theoretical point of view, uh, if uh, all the uh, main conjectures are true, then uh, mine is also true in this context, which are the following. So if you look at evolution equations, this is an infinite dimensional uh, dynamical <coughs> system, we go on to the future. Then, one of the conjectures is that for most initial points, you have complete orbits, so orbits don't collapse uh, at a finite time, so they, you can go on. Uh, the second conjecture, uh, uh, both are proven in a special case uh, when you have a lot of dissipation. The second case, is uh, the second uh, question is a complete solution, so solutions that can be defined for all time, <coughs> they will converge to a certain, in each case, to a certain finite dimensional space. That's another main conjecture in the, the field. Also proven to be true uh, in the uh, uh, hypothesis of dissipation. Now, if you put the two together, then if, if uh, they are complete, uh, solutions for most initial points, the solutions are complete, and they go to a finite dimension of space, then you are in business here. You're bound to see finitely many attractors in a finite dimension of space. And with uh, uh, most of these complete orbits going to this attractor. So anyhow, uh, no one says so far that I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> they seem to, to find reasonable uh, what, uh, what matches the, the experiment. There is another interesting situation, which uh, I was told by uh, David Bunford. 
David Manfred is a, a very interesting mathematician. He started in number theory and algebraic geometry, uh, got a Fields Medal, I forgot when, 72. But more recently, he moved into vision, um, uh, computer graphics, but more vision. And he tells me that when you collect many data, so one problem people like to deal with uh, these days is to uh, collect a lot of data. And then they plot it and they want to say something. Well, uh, he tells me that uh, there seems to be in these many situations uh, a concentration of this data in certain spots, which again would fit the idea of uh, finitely many attractors. I don't know, we will see. Thank you very much again. Thank you.